Okay, this is Diffie Hellman Key Exchange. It's actually a very, very short lecture. Okay, but it's really awesome. Um, imagine if I live here in Oklahoma and Cameron lives in New York. You all see they're going to get like six feet of snow. Yeah, I saw a picture of it. You ever seen a picture of a, a sandstorm before? That's what the snow cloud looks like. They actually saw it, showed it on the news. It's like this massive white cloud coming in. And New York was there, like, yeah, it's going to hit here very shortly. Hey, I, was, I was worried about the snow we had the other yeah. few days ago. But imagine if I'm here in Oklahoma and we got Cameron over there in New York, and we want to transfer some securely. Well, we got to get the key to him somehow. So how am I going to get the key to Cameron over an unsecured network? Think about it. The Internet's unsecure. So, so that's how we're going to do it. Okay? If I can, where are we going? There we go. All right, how it works is that Alice and Bob share a Diffie Hellman group, G and P are the letters for that. They also share a large prime number P and an integer G. Okay? Ouch. Okay. So they're basically, you now P is a large prime number and the integer is G. So we're sharing that. It says Alice normally chooses G and P. So, Cameron, you can be Alice, okay? I'll be Bob. <laughs> okay. Okay. So Alice normally chooses G and P and shares it with Bob. Okay. Alice generates a large random number X. We're going to see how all this works. Then sends a half key, which is equal to G to the X, G to the small X. Okay. Gives us our big X mod P. We're going to see an example of this. Okay. X is usually a large 180-bit random number, but as it is with all of our assignments, we're using very small numbers to make it doable. Okay. All right. Bob generates a large random number Y and sends his half key to Alice. Okay, and there's the math for that. Okay. Then they compute the key. Okay. So each of us are going to compute our own key, yet the keys are going to be the same. We'll see an example of this. So it's very short. Okay. That's all the math there is to it. That's it. I mean, it's literally that right there and that right there. You're done. Okay? So real simple. Advantage is the key is at least as strong as the strongest half key. Now, when doing your assignment, you need to calculate both half keys. Because I've been known to put some in there where they don't match. Okay? I have had people in the past just do one of them. Like, you did do the other one. Okay? So do both. It says, neither Alice nor Bob can compute or completely sabotage the resulting key. And neither one of them knows the other's key. Well, they know what the key is. They just don't know how they got it. Okay? Some disadvantages, there's no authentication. So I'm working with Cameron over the Internet. I don't know for sure that's Cameron. But at least the person I'm working with, I'm going to be able to communicate with them. Okay? No prevention of replay or flooding attacks. And... No protection against denial of service. So there is some issues with it. But if I want to get a key across, this is the best way to do it. Now we're going to see how it works. Okay? So consider the diffie hellman schema with G of 3, P of 353. It says Alice and Bob pick X of 97 and Y 33. Compute the half keys. Okay? So when you do the math, it's actually very simple. There's the answer to it. Okay? So... X equals G to the X mod P. So X is equal to 3, and you notice 3 was G. 3 raised to the X. So G to the X, like it says, it's G to the X, so 3 to the 97 mod P gives us 40. Okay? And then 3 to the 233 mod 353 gives us 248. Okay? So the math behind this is very simple. Okay. Now that gives us our half key. Now the actual key is, I mean, there's still a half key, but those are the kind of like the intermediary numbers there. So the key is x to the y mod p, so 40 to 233 mod 353 gives us 160, and all these do work fine in a calculator, so that's not an issue. And 248 to the 97 mod 353 gives us 160. So they do work out. And you'll notice that both keys are 160. So if we did this math, then we would both end up with a key of 160. Obviously, in the real world, the key would be much larger because we'd be working with very large numbers. Did I see that? Okay. So again, 
Well, they don't share it. So they share G and P, okay? And then Alice generates an X, and then Bob generates the Y. So Alice does not share the X, Bob does not share the Y, okay? <coughs> so when you get here, the, the 97 and the 233 are never shared, okay? So see how that works out? Okay. Let's look at another one, okay? Now we have a G of 2, P of 11, then we have 6 and 8 as our X and Y. So G to the 6, mod 11 is 9, or 2 to the 6, and 2 to the 8 to mod 11 is 3. Then 9 to the 8th and 3 to the 6th, you'll see the 9, this 9 right here, actually becomes this X right here, so this X is the 9, and this 3 becomes the Y, okay? We never actually share the 6 and the 8, okay? The 9 to the 8 mod 11 is 3, 3 to the 6 mod 11 is 3 as well. So it works very, very simply. So the math behind it is super, super easy. And you'll notice the keys match. Now, that's all of the lecture, but I want to show you what the assignment is. Because you need to do that. Now, I have the answers, but that wouldn't be any fun. No. Let's look at this one first. I have a practice assignment up there. Now, I just give you some numbers. So if you want to make sure you know how to do it, just walk through it. And then I have the answers at the bottom. Okay. They are all up there so you can verify they work. Just like the AES practice was up there. All right, now, your homework is this. Complete the exercises on the quizzes, okay? Now, it's not timed again. It is timed for two hours, but it, I have to put something in there. So, but it's not gonna ever expire. You can be six days late, I don't care. It's not a problem. All right, now, the questions are this. Maybe. Well, there it goes. These are the exact questions you're going to be doing. Okay. I'll make them a little bigger so you can see them. I just have 10 different assignments or questions doing this. And actually, I'll show you exactly how you're going to submit them so you'll know. Let me pause for a second while I log in D2L. Okay. So this is the actual Diffie-Hellman homework. Maybe. Here's how you're going to answer it. You're going to compute the half key, and then compute the key based on the half key. Okay. And when you do it, just put the answer in there. Don't put half key is 2. Just put 2. Or half key is 9. Or don't go in here and put, you know, x equals 9. Don't do that. Just put in 9. Okay? Then that's, that, it makes it greater, much better that way. But those are the exact same ones. So you can start this. You can print them out. Do whatever you want to do. And then, you know, they're all there. It, that's, that's actually a good question. I have the date already set on here, I think. Let's look. It's due on the 30th, so you got a week and a half to do it. Okay. The reason is AES was due this week, so I want to give you a little more time. Okay. Now back to your questions. Okay, let's go back to the thing here. Okay, so again, they share G and P. Okay. Alice normally chooses it and shares it with Bob. Again, they both end up with it. Alice generates integer x and then sends the big x over there. So Alice takes the g and p that they both know of and her small x, her random number. So she's using g, p, and her small x. These three values right... No. These... Uh, basically, g, x, and p is what Alice is using. Then she sends the big X to Bob. She never, ever shares this small X. Okay? Bob does the same thing. He has the G and P, and he chooses the small Y. Never shares the small Y. 
So Alice already knows the G and P, so then Bob shares the big Y with Alice. Okay. Then they use, so Alice over here, since Alice is the one that has the small x, Alice uses the big Y that she got from Bob, along with the small, y, small x that she chose, P. Bob uses the big x he got from Alice, along with the little y that he chose and kept secret. So this little x and little y are never shared. And since it's an EXP problem, since it's exponential, we know it's very difficult to figure out. Because if I just gave you, let's go over here to an answer. If I just gave you this 248, so if you had 3 and 353, and you, three, 3 was raised to something, you come up with that. I mean, that would be very hard to figure out exactly which number is used to generate this. Okay. So this 97 and 233 are never shared. Makes better sense now? Okay. Any questions on that? So again, the answers, I think, actually, I might even, did I put the questions? I think I might have put the questions in there. Let's look. No, I didn't. But they are, uh, you can just go into the quizzes area, and I will show you the quizzes is not timed. It is, but it isn't. You'll see here, just so I'm not dreaming here. It's under restrictions. Here we go. 120 minutes, but it's not enforced. And it allows a normal submission with late. So you're good. You can open it up, work on them, save each question as you go, and then hit submit when you're done. Okay? Easy enough? It's a very, very, very simple thing to do. You will have to do a couple of them on the test, so just know how to do it. Okay. I do not think I gave you the entire formula in here. Let's make sure. Pretty sure I did not give you the entire formula. See, time is unlimited. Okay. Let's open this up again. Yeah, I did not give you the formula. You have to figure out, actually, I give you the, the, this portion of it because it does matter which way you do it. But I did not give you the formula for the beginning part. Okay. Everybody okay? Easy enough? Someone's already done it, actually. So Someone's working ahead. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. I told you a very, very, very short recording tonight. And homework's quite easy. And then we got two more lectures after this.